I like kids. Oh, I mean, kids that are kids. I don't mean, you know, the kids that people are trying to make grow up too fast or trying to make them into the next American Idol or putting them into some kind of mega sports program or constantly on top of their case, you know, that they have to measure up to some kind of standard that, you know, they're forcing these kids into growing up too fast. No, I don't like that. But I do like kids. You know, children that are allowed to be children. Because Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. And I remember how childlike I was, even in high school. How, frankly, pretty pure and innocent I was in a lot of ways until I became a young man. And I think in um, studying, as we do Tozer, we need to take a look back or a look at you know some things that we forget sometimes. One is to have fun. You know, I think about some of the ways that I used to have fun, which may not make any sense to you, because you see, I used to enjoy life. No, really, just life itself. I would go walking everywhere I went because, first of all, I wasn't given a car, you know, and I didn't even get my license until I think I was 22 or 3. And uh, I don't remember being driven anywhere or even taking a bus. I walked everywhere. So when I walked, I always had these thoughts in my mind that, you know, it's kind of like head games. You know, you play these little games in your mind to make yourself walk faster. You know, like you'd see someone up ahead, so you'd speed up a little bit, you know, to catch up with them. And then you'd pass them as though you were a racing car, you know. And then you were ahead, but you didn't want them to catch up to you, so you sped up a little farther to get even farther ahead. So it kind of made time go by fast. Or I remember, you know, because I was in choir, you know, singing songs, you know, like, I love to go wandering along the mountain track. And as I go, I love to sing my knapsack on my back. Baldry. You know, kind of like that, anyways. But I remember I used to also love it when the winds would come up. You know, kind of like what's happening outside. You know, the wind, just a little bit of breeze would come up. And I lived out in kind of a sort of rural area. You know, it was kind of in Southern Cal, so it's not too rural, but it was called Norco. And what I would do is I'd start running. And I would run and leap over trash cans just for fun. You know, they call, they have a thing for it nowadays. Young kids are doing it. You know, they call it free, I think it's free running, where they run up walls and they leap things, you know, and jump over things. Well, I didn't go running up walls, but, you know, I do remember in hallways, you know, how you could kind of like spider them. You know, you put your feet against one wall and your hands against the other, then you could spider yourself up to the top and then you watch people walk under you. People never look up. <laughs> But that was fun. I remember doing that. I still to this day think of looking at palm trees and wondering if I could wrap my arms around them and squiggle up them. You know, it's kind of fun that way. Now, it's not thrill seeking, you know, like some people are dumb enough to go after hurting themselves, but it was enjoying the simple things. And you could do that. You don't have to increase it, you can decrease your level of enjoyment by just simply enjoying the simple things. And I remember, you know, hearing that song, you know, who's walking down the streets of the city, smiling at everybody she sees, who's reaching out to capture a rainbow, everyone knows it's windy. And I'd go running, you know, singing that song, and I'd leap over a trash can and think, wow, that was cool. Then I'd go around and leap over another one, you know, and it was great. But you know what's funny is that I know that God must have had salvation in mind for me way back when because you see I remember that I wasn't saved by the way and I wasn't a Christian and I didn't get raised in the church and nobody had brought me up with any knowledge of God I was a sci-fi buff but I remember you know I used to go running around you know and I'd jump over these trash cans and stuff you know even as a young man or high school and then I remember like you know sometimes there'd be these fights you know in people's yards and I'd go over and break them up <laughs> I thought fighting was the stupidest thing that people could do. If I'd go over and tell them, you know, hey, knock it off, you know, leave him alone, you know, and break up fights. And I used to be called, it was funny because it seemed to be a habit throughout my life, I was called peacemaker. And I didn't really remember that until, you know, a long time later. Then I remembered lots of times, you know, that I broke up fights. And it was kind of neat, you know, that I could look back over my life and see that God had blessed me you know, by working in my life way before I ever knew that he was there or even understood him. And that's kind of like what we need to do sometimes in our life is to 
kind of understand what's all around us for us to enjoy. You know, that God has brought this day to us. He's allowed you the privilege to enjoy today. He said, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. The reason being is, you're not dead yet. You get it? You're not dead yet. So what do you got to be miserable about? You're not dead. So what? Maybe you suffered. So what? Who cares? Once you die, it's over. You get to move on into something better if you're saved. You know, if you're not saved, God help you, you're going to hell. <laughs> That's not enjoyment. You better get what you can now, and guess what? You know, I don't think I recommend that way. I think you better repent now and get gone before you get there, because if you don't, guess where you're going to go? Uh, it's not such a good thing. But you know, I really, really wonder about Christians who are saved, how they can be so miserable. You know, they get down and out about so many different things and get torn up and shook about by so many different ideas and thoughts and, you know, like politics, you know, they get all wrapped up in that. And then, you know, I ask them, well, you know, like, okay, now that you've, you know, fought about, you know, who you want to vote for and you're trying to lie about who you want in office and you're trying to tear out, tear down everyone else around you, how's that working out for you? Are you really happy? <laughs> you know, or... Or all these people that get all wrapped up in their sports games, you know, and I watch them get, you know, zealously into it, you know, and I kind of watch and I say, oh, yeah, that's kind of interesting. You know, once it's over, you know, and the season's done, I go, well, how's that working out for you? What happened to, you know, your sports team? Oh, it's off season? Oh, okay. So you're not happy anymore? No. Oh, okay. They lost? Oh, I'm sorry. You see, God isn't like that. God says, hey, I have every day for you to enjoy. You could choose not to, but you see, I've said to you, and James, count it all joy. I've given you my spirit so that you could enjoy the day that I have made. And one of the things that made Christians different was that they could accept all of the catastrophes with peace. Well, yeah, you know, Nero's out killing a bunch more Christians, you know, toss them to the lions, but you know, Praise the Lord, they were singing on their way. You know, they just rejoiced because they saw Jesus was standing next to them. And even though Nero couldn't see them, they were standing there and God was wiping away their, their, the sweat off their brow, you know. And they were a great witness. Isn't that neat? Isn't that glad? Boy, we got something to rejoice in the fact that Nero was killing off Christians because that made the church grow even bigger. See the way you can look at things? If you're always looking at it from the wrong perspective, you got your hat on backwards. You're just not getting it. You're just not really living it. You see, you're just existing. You're just one of those people that lets circumstances affect the way you live. Not you live through the circumstances with God in it. Because if God is in you, heck, <laughs> there's the creator of the universe. What do you got to worry about? <laughs> No offense, but I think that if I die or if I live, since he's in me, I'm going to be with him. I kind of think it's a better thing to go than it is to stay. Now, maybe I'm a little weird, but, you know, that makes me enjoy my life. That makes me look at every day of my life with the ability to, no matter what it ha is or what has happened in it, I can kind of look around and go, huh, it's not so bad after all. <laughs> Man, I got plants, I got flowers, I got trees, I got bees, you know, I got the birds. And I got the birds and the bees and flowers and the trees and the moon up above and this thing called love. No, I got God. So, who really are you worried about today? Who really are you fearful of? I mean, okay, maybe you have a loved one in the hospital. What are you worried about? Maybe they'll die. That could be a good thing. Don't you think? Or are you selfishly holding on to them? Think about it. Children have that capacity to enjoy wherever they're at. You see, children that are like suffering in Sudan or suffering in some part of the world where they're starving, I've been to those places. Maybe not Sudan, but I've been to places where people are starving, children are starving. They still enjoy life. You may not realize that, but they don't know any different. So they enjoy what they can 
where they are with what they got. And they don't think of it as any different. It's not like they missed out on anything. But you, adult, Christian, are you missing out, you think, because you don't have a Harley or you don't have a giant ministry or you don't have, you know, what you wanted in life at this stage in your life? Get a grip. You got life. You got the day the Lord has made. If you didn't know any better, why would you be comparing? In other words, be a child. Learn the lesson that children have, that they can enjoy what they have where they're at. And that's why Jesus said for them to suffer them to come unto him. Because he could rejoice with them with the freedom that children have. He could laugh with them that the freedom children have to laugh. That they could play with him with the freedom that adults have forgotten how to play. We all need to recognize that God has given us this day one more day to be alive. So we need to rejoice and be glad in it. We need to accept that God is the one who has arranged our lives and that if you don't like it, you can talk to him about it and he'll help you to enjoy it. Because you really can't have an abundant life. Not the abundance you might think, but an abundance of joy that would be unmeasurable when you compare it to what you're going to go through in life and lose and abuse and confuse things that often happen in life. But for me, <laughs> I still get a kick out of it. <laughs> God shares his good pleasure with his own. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. Psalm 73.25 It is the nature of God to share. His mighty acts of creation and redemption were done for his good pleasure, but his pleasure extends to all created things. One has only to look at a healthy child at play or listen to the song of a bird at sundown and he will know that God meant his universe to be a joyful one. If you really want to be miserable, not only can you, you are. Those who have been spiritually enabled to love God for himself will find a thousand fountains springing up from the rainbow circled throne and bring countless treasures which are to be received with reverent thanksgiving as being the overflow of God's love for his children. Boy, is that a mouthful. But really, when you love God for who God is, and you recognize he is in all these things, everywhere I look I see his handiwork, then you kind of, you know, like, begin to appreciate him a lot more, you know, as someone who loves you someone who cares about you, someone who's really made everything for you to enjoy, and you could enjoy it if you want to, because there's lots to see and do and experience that you could enjoy if you wanted to. Each gift is a bonus of grace, which because it was not sought for itself, may be enjoyed without injury to the soul. These include the simple blessings of life, such as health, a home, a family, congenial friends, food, shelter, the pure joys of nature, or the more artificial pleasures of music and art. The effort to find these treasures by direct search apart from God has been the major activity of mankind throughout the centuries. And this has been man's burden and man's woe. Whenever you don't bring God into what you're doing, you'll find that God will... <laughs> kind of like let you go do without him lots of things and you find you didn't really want to do it not without him but with him man it just keeps getting better and better God's will and God wills that we should love him for himself alone with no hidden reasons trusting him to be to us all our nature requires for this is eternal life, that they should know you, O Father, and him whom you have sent. If you want to know what eternal life is, it's knowing God. That's what First John says. Or that's what Jesus said. Our Lord said all this much better. He said it pretty simple and pretty direct. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. 
I know, based upon how people are and how Christians are, that the first thing a Christian will do is lose their joy as fast as they can. Not because they say, hey, I want to lose it, but because they abuse it in such a way that they don't bring God into their equation, the picture, or even listen to God when he's talking to them by simply saying something like, the crickets at night, the frogs in the evening, the sparrow at sunset, the wind as it blows through the trees, the stirring of the breeze through my tomato plants, the silences that are golden. Even cars are now. <laughs> but often we don't listen and see the beauty like this squirrel right now that's just going nuts eating the bark off of this tree. And I have all these things that come around me to remind me of those things, like the hummingbird that comes and the, the blue jay that steals little food nodules out of my soil. And all these things, I just look at God and I say, thank you. And the weird thing is, is that most of the time, when I look at these things that God brings, like that squirrel just now when I said thank you, he turned his head and looked right at me as soon as I said it. The weird thing is when the hummingbirds do the same thing and the blue jay does the same thing and I find all these things happening in my life the same way, you think I'm going to deny it's God? Not me, man. <laughs> That's for you to deny. I know why I enjoy my day. Because God is in it. I pray that it may be the same way for you today. Don't be surprised if you start to see these miraculous little things really blow your mind. Because they will. Because God is in it.